to see. And this particular video, y'all, I will be reviewing Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 4, Episode 7. Sorry, y'all, this is probably going to be uploading. Y'all ain't going to probably see it till tomorrow because I can't find, I ain't going to lie, I didn't have a screw loose. So the top of this tripod, I actually had to use, real talk, the back of my calculator because I was sick and tired to look for it. I'll probably find it, but it, you know, it's hidden somewhere. It'd be right up in your, <laughs> right in your face. And yeah, y'all, but shout out to my YouTube fam. But I wanted to get it real quick, which I did not address in my last video. To send your prayers and send your condolences to people down in Texas that are affected by Hurricane Harvey. And, you know, if you can, contribute what you can. Even if it's just a hashtag, even just bring awareness and, you know, share across if you're on social media or something. You know, because there's some people who have lost everything. You know, unfortunately, some cases, even people have lost their lives and everything. Um... I know Jamar watched it. I watched his YouTube video uh, videos as well, um, and also Miss Tink, um, National Pro uh, Natural Pro Systems TV. Um, she's also down there. She as well. I last time I checked her Instagram, she was okay. But yeah, shout, keep everyone their prayers. Also, you know, just you know, just so forth, because you never know what happened. That's just it's devastating based on the imagery, everything that I I seen. And also, when I looked at Ashley Miller's video um, before I started posting um, um, on Scorpion show, um, Kevin's mother just, I think, yesterday had went for emergency surgery. So please keep, you know, send some prayers over there as well, okay? Just send, you know, just prayers, the power of prayers do work, okay, y'all? Um, sorry about that. I just felt that was very important. And I didn't get to address that last night, my last video, I, you know. But, you know, it's very important to bring awareness to that. But anyway, y'all, let's get into the shenanigans. Now, we're back to, okay, let's get through with this Alexis guy. I mean, she's kind of dibble-dabble all through this episode. And, um, we have Pierce, a soul Lucci comes back for two seconds. Apparently, this is why they were in this quick instant relationship because it was one scene he did apologize to her from calling her pass around, you know, community, community college puss. And basically, they used to be friends, or friends most likely, probably business, whatever, uh, before they got together. And he apologized, you know, about, you know, how Sarah, you know, would hurt with this stuff and also what he said. But it is, you know, unless you just realize it's that they're better off just being friends. So we don't know friends me because like I said, pe that can be different as far as terms of friends. But yeah, so we don't know we're going to see Solo go solo again or Sarah, okay? Or towards the end, you know, uh, of this uh, season. Yeah. So, now we got Moniz, Masika, and Nia that always makes that one appearance and you didn't even know why she's there, okay? Now, we also has Ray J has returned, right? And I swear, the song that he was making for Bridget Kelly. Now, Bridget Kelly, y'all, actually, y'all used to watch Love and Hip Hop Atlanta a couple seasons earlier when I think when Mimi was staying in Stevie's house. Um, they actually had Bridget Kelly's songs. But Bridget Kelly's a talent songwriter and singer, and she used to be signed to Rock Nation. So I don't know what is going here. So Ray J is up there. He did admit finally last time he, you know, a song was on the charge was Sassy Can I. And, um, so we, even though we've been seeing some songs on and off these couple seasons and, but it, he knows that nothing's popping off. So he decides that he's going to work with his best that he makes, has to make this song that sounds like I said, it should be featured Chappelle show or something like that ever comes back or while I'm out or something, you can go on there with this. Cause I was just like, really? And he has uh, Bridget Kelly he been up there sleeping in the studio, relaxing his ass and stuff as you want to call it because he's been just working. And since, you know, he's trying to hold off, you know, building up his, you know, his sperm count, whatever, build up his soldiers, um, you know, because he's trying to get um, a princess pregnant, but at the same time, he's not admitting to her what, you know, is going on, you know, having a low sperm count. So he decides to, you know, talk to Bridget Kelly, she come in for a second, whatever, right? And he, he, she wants to get out of, you know, you know, it's like, she wants to, you know, fresh her image a little bit. And she don't want to be stereotyped in the box. And when she sings, sings the song's a little nice. When she gives us a little snippet, and everyone rage is like, you know, she, 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 you know, she, what she talking about? She don't want to be. That's what she doing. So he got a song right. Like this is comical, personally to me. 
The song is like this. We cooking up in the kitchen. And I first thought baby's a song about, you know, y'all sexing probably in the kitchen. Or baking some eggs or breakfast after. He okay, well, y'all don't rest. But he decided to say, bad bitches on the stove. We about, we about to roll. And your legs is on here like a G here with the cross and it like just a G's is piece right next to my necklace. Your ankle bracelet. I'm like, what it of oh, something? Yeah, when I'm in there, it's so good. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he is trying to it, it went from I then I thought it was a song that was about to be like, you know, you pushing weight or you know, you you know, you whipping it? What is you doing? You, it's, it's a, a, no, Ray J, no. And Gritty Ken has a look on her face like you first thought she wasn't going to go with it, whatever, right? And then we have another scene where A1 stops, and like I said, he needs to endorse his pearls. He up here losing endorsements up here with the pearls. I think this is the only scene that we've seen him in this particular one, right? Um, he, you know, he didn't have the the Super Mario pearls this time, but he, he had the earrings, you know, but like I said, he needs endorsements of fresh water, you know, A1 fresh water pearls, okay? But he had nerves to say this song was dope, and here you hear Bridget Kelly's vocals in the background, and Ray J's bragging like, yeah, I got it, but he's thinking this is a dope song. I'm like, Ray J, no, don't, don't, don't do it. No, you can... It, you one wish was not a song that was over sexualized. We're getting your girl back. He he has the chance potential that he just starts singing here and just singing his songs about I'm a love you one. People might actually listen, bro. It's okay. You ain't gotta always talk about um you know um smashing at least in that way format. Like no. But. A1 says good, so Ray J also wanted to let me know that he, you know, was basically trying to avoid his wife to a certain extent. And he'd been up in the studio, sneaking and slurring and writing songs. And then he decides to tell A1 this, y'all. I'm surprised A1 didn't get off the couch after hearing this. He said, you know, he was going to save up his wife's soldiers and stuff so they can march up into princess, the princess, whatever. But he got caught up by looking at some nice pictures or, 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 or Princess Bust Wide Open his phone, whatever the heck it was. And then he decided to let one off, uh, 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 Jack, on somewhere on the couch. And I'm just like, you, you didn't get no knack. Do, do, uh, you got pillows and covers, but you ain't got no nothing to dispose, you know, uh, you, you skeet skeet, really? And A1 just looked like, I don't want to hear that, but he's, he's still at the way. I just like, Nick, did, did you, why didn't you tell us before I sent my ass down here? You know, up in your darn nuts angels somewhere. Shit. So, but, but, so after that, um, he about to go talk about, so he back in there talking about, you know, when I'm deep inside or whatever. Then all of a sudden, Princess comes in. And Princess come in having this beautiful cape on, Alpha Sambo on, and this one of her fashion, even fashions on that Ray J, he was just like, y y you kind of, well, what's going on with your outfit? And she just like, just like you got your, so your song deep inside it or whatever, I got my fashion. So she is going for, I'm, I'm a fabulous uh, super girl, or super woman, I, I don't know what the name is, uh, Vixen Cape? I don't know what was going on, okay? Um... But anyways, she's talking about she ambulated. She only got one, two, three, third tomorrow, whatever. And Ray J already supposed to do a photo shoot, which he also told A1 uh, about that he's going to do with Bridget Kelly. Because he's got to be a pretty girl. And, you know, he wants her, you know, with a fur on and a bikini and some baby oil. And probably get some coconut off of Safari. You know, you got to make sure, you know, you put in endorsements of Safari's baby oil. Uh, co coconut oil. My bad. Wrong oil. So... Um, he tried to pretend like, oh, I got this romantic plan thing. And they were just looking like, hmm, um, ain't that what you say go to the phone? So he go to a two for one, y'all. And Princess decided, because she's like, you know, she wants to spend time with her husband ever since they came back from England somewhere or something like that. And, you know, last year he was on the scooter bikes. And now he's all tied up in the studio. So later on, we see Bridget Kelly. She's uh, she's up there in some uh, a sambo on getting ready for the photo shoot. But... Um, we see her, I, I think, no, she comes a little later on, 
because Brent, you know, um, Ray J um, has her has Princess come in the exact same room. You see all these lights. You see, you know these different clothes in the background and he tried to lie and say it's role play and you see a cameraman come out from the side from the other side of the room or whatever like uh, okay well you want me to shoot this uh, photo whatever and here comes Bridget Kelly her outfit and the shirt of Temple Curls his princess come on she's like what in the hell is going on here and he decided well I, I'm just gonna do the phony shoot I'm just gonna do it quicker okay um this is what I'm working with you know I love you blah 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 princess getting offended that she leaves Bridget, uh, Bridget Kelly, you know, even though Princess says hi to Bridget and she realizes a photo shoot, Bridget Kelly even tells Ray J, like, you know, I'm sitting here looking ridiculous and your your wife can think, like, you know, I'm so some dumb stuff, whatever, by doing this, okay? So, anyways, after that, I guess they do the photo shoot, but they don't show up. But I'm like, no, why, Bridget? Why? Okay. Um, he go. Ray J does go later on to talk to his wife at the beach. He didn't even do a fresh shave. We don't see. We don't see the goatee no more. Nothing at the moment. And he admits to her that he has low spine count and he went to the doctor. And she was happy that he at least is caring about it. But we do know that wasn't it also a contest? Really, also as well. That was also excluded as well. Because last time I checked, even though he said his boys went and all did the count, I, I could have sworn he did that. But he didn't say it was really a bet about who got to work with his or he. Okay. But she's willing, you know, she's not, doesn't have a problem, right? at least he's trying, so they're going to keep trying, of course. But I don't know if he, you know, that third day or she made up with him the next day or whatever. But, yeah. So, we are going to this Moniece slash 80, Tiffany, you know, whatever situation. Then we're going to go later on to uh, Cisco and him. Because it really wasn't that too much this episode besides those those things, right? So... We got it where AD finally is able to get Tiffany and Monice to meet up. And, but before then, here's the problem. Masika also is intertwined with the whole thing with Alessa Sky or whatever, right? Um, first we got, what well, after Buzz, if y'all ever watched Everbus TV, they do a lot of reviews. Damn, they're almost in every show and recaps. And sometimes some of the cast members may appear. I haven't, honestly haven't really listened or watched after Buzz TV in at least about a whole good year or so, but... You know, they also have an extension called, or another show that's affiliated with After Buzz. I think it's Black Hollywood Live. And Masiko Moniz uh, have their own podcast. And first they should call her Hazel E. Nate, um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Nasal He and all this other stuff. Then they go Nikki Baby look like a walking con condom. And then I think Moniz goes on Tiffany a little bit talking about she got, got uh, 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 um, basically a uh, 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 condom as well or open coochie, whatever as well. And I think she's supposed to meet up or mentions about she's meeting up with her possibly to, uh, um, the balance is out. But yeah, they going off on uh, them. And I think uh, uh, FC Sky was also brought up as well. But yeah, so everybody, they got a problem or problem with what's listed on the show. I mean, listening on that, that little particular cop podcast. So anyways, y'all. We go to another scene where we got, what is it, who is his name? Maurice Mo, whatever his name was, a Brooks, uh, uh, Brooke Valentine's man or whatever, right? He performing, okay, whatever. And Lyrica's there, and we got Nia and Monice there. Monice's there to support other artists and stuff like that, even though we haven't heard her in a minute, okay? But Lyrica, you know, us talking to Lesha Sky, like I said, Monice already has a problem with anybody since Masika has a problem with this person, she has a problem with this person, blah, blah, blah. So, um, after Alexis, because Alexis already knew it was going to be so big, because she already could see them in the corner, okay? Brooke, even though she is not with the dude, she still is not giving him the whatever, but she's still supporting. If you're going to go silent, girl, this is how you do silent. No contact, no nothing. That's the real side, because there's still, you mean, it's an open opportunity, and one leg can cross over here, and the other one can cross over there. If you're going to give side a treatment, and even if y'all cross paths, whatever, but you keep walking this way, you don't go and give it out there. You, that's giving, that's still saying that you probably you want to be with the dude. Okay, because they talked a little bit, but he really wasn't too much in this episode. But I'm just saying is, is that she's saying, you know, I'm through with him. But I'm going to still support him. Okay, yeah, but you're saying, okay, whatever. Uh -uh. So, anyways, after Alexis leaves this little you know, party, 
Um, first, Lyrica talks to Brooke, and Brooke and her is talking a little bit, and, um, you know, Lyrica's, I'm having a pre-listening party, and, you know, Brooke was like, no offense, but when you, you know, you've been a while to put your album out, but Lyrica didn't say this to Brooke. She said it in a confessionals about, what, what, let's be real, what's the what last time you put out some music out, whatever, but anyways, I'm just gonna let that be. And they just talk for a second and then whatever. And then Lyrica waves. I think Brooke leaves too or whatever. She wasn't no longer in the scene, I noticed. Because I maybe it would have been different if Brooke was there when this was said. Lyrica goes talk to Monisa N N Naya, whatever. And she invites them to the, par to the party. Uh, her listening party. And Monisa and them have to know who's there. And once they find out Lexus, you know, Monisa's like, mm -mm, I'm not, blah, 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 whatever, blah, 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 blah. So, Nia, yeah, I don't think she, whether or not, did she say something or did we care or what, I mean, or if she was going, or, you know, say that she was for sure about not going or not. And Lyrica just like, okay, whatever. And Hunice is basically to the point where, okay, fine, well, I'm not trying to be around with nobody who's associated with the enemy. They're my enemy, you know, they're going to seek his enemy, blah, 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 basically, whatever. I'm not trying to be around blah, 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 whatever, right? But... You know, Lyrica's like, okay, well, you ain't got to come then anyway, all right? And then she just leaves. And then Monice gets mad at Lyrica. You can hear her go out the door, and you know, go out the door. She's like, no, I want to fight her or something. And Lyrica's like, you know, do something, do something. But, I mean, before Lyrica left, she even told her to her face on, you You know, you got a problem, a problem with me after the uninvite, whatever. Monice decides to call Lyrica a bitch. And she's like, you know what? I am a bitch. I am that bitch who's wrote songs with Chris Brown. This is this, 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 this person here, this person having revelance. Um, you know, you work on studio, work on some studio material. You know, work on that a bit. Okay, bye bye. And that's when Winnie wanted to say this comment like she wanted to fire. Now we're about to go flashback, you know, real quick on something because it's interesting that she threatened that she wanted to beat Lyrica, and they never, of course, got in scuffle. Just went to cut in scene. Now, when. When she went to go meet AD with Tiffany, whatever, Tiffany, you know, was the first one supposed to say stuff. Of course, Tiffany must have heard what was said on the podcast about her. But even before that, like I said, Tiffany actually appears to be somebody who's a scarred, bitter person, former lover, brother, um, you know, ex-girlfriend, whatever type of person that still wants their ex or ex-partner, ex-lover, whatever, friends, benefit, whatever. Because she's... Talking about, well, she got a problem with these because she don't think she's a real lesbian. And, you know, you, the son thing. And, again, keep bringing up this thing about the son. And Monique's like, what is you talking about? My son for? Now, I got to agree with Monique about that. And here's Tiffany. Well, I heard that because from AD. And Monique's is like, well, she's lying then. And AD didn't say nothing. She didn't say nothing like whether it was true or not, whatever. But I noticed that even though Tiffany was doing this, Monice didn't threaten one time, but listen to bonus scene, which I my ass ain't gonna watch. She didn't say shit about she was gonna beat her ass. I don't think the word bitch was used really towards her. Monice did the church finger and got the heck on and walk out the restaurant. Okay, maybe because of safety, because it was AD and this was her best friend of 15 years. Whatever. But she didn't do the same thing to Lyrica later on in the episode. You see what I'm saying? So that's pretty interesting. But at the same time, we get another scene where Lyrica meets up with Hazel E and um, Alexis and they talk about what happened at the party and Reese Fred, whatever. And, you know, Alexis is like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, when I see him, I see him. Hazel E should big, big it up Alexis' head up and shit. Like, you know, they're just mad because, you know, you're this and you're that, you know, you're noon, blah, blah, blah. And Alexis let us know she got something up their sleeve. And she basically, because she has all these followers and likes, that she gonna do something or whatever. So what they gonna do? Troll her with a bunch of darn, uh, a, a, a Muji, a Muji order? What are they gonna hack in her page? What is she talking about? I mean, she was acting like as if she really had some dirt, like the way she was talking, like she had some exclusives. Somebody hacked, you know, her iPhone or some shit. What, what was she going to do to any of three, uh, whether it was Moniz, Nia or Masi especially Masika, you know, you know what I'm saying? So she, what they found out is Masika in another scene. Now, I, uh, and I think when these meet up with her because she's going house shopping. Monice comes there and she tells about how Lester was talking about on Instagram on some video 
about them. Y'all just mad, you know, the turn. Y'all just mad because I got this and I got that. And y'all y'all mad because I got all this. All this saw glistening and stuff like that. I just got all the sun and I got all this body, you know. You know, it's been a couple things, you know, physically enhanced by surgeons. And, you know, but she's like, they, you know what, she think we jazz, you know, just a, that little back and forth, they blah, blah, blah. And I think when he said she was talking stuff about her son as well, you know, her parenthood. And I'm just like, okay, this, this down. The baby look, the baby fine. He smiled. You see him with his mommy. And with Fizz, he makes a he's guest appearance on a show he originally used to star in. Every six episodes, he's cool. You don't hear nothing bad about the, none of the parents. So they seem to be cool. Let them be, okay? So... Yeah, so let's get into this last part. Now, Cisco got two women over him. Now, and also I want to uh, suggest another endorsement to somebody. Amber should be, I, I don't know if she's endorsing a lingerie bikini line, but she, you know, maybe it should be called Black Diamond, you know, uh, Intimate Apparel. Because she's, every time I see her, she's usually in some black, Bikini or lingerie, not that she not love not nice, but I'm just saying this. You mind, she might as well endorse it. Even when she tried on last last episode, she was in a black swimsuit bikini thing, whatever. She's always letting us know. Look at all this. So I'm thinking, why don't she just go ahead and patent that and make some money off that too? Shit, because when she even met up, she um met a uh, um contacted terry to talk to her about what's going on right and guess when she's at the pole what we see another lovely back bikini so but like i said amber is really head over heels over cisco okay and even though she's talking to um hurt Tierra Reed to see what's going on her side of the story. She still kind of let her know I'm not going anywhere, but she was letting her know, her, her, her know like, you know, he's good to me, blah, blah, blah and all this other stuff. Tierra Reed was like, okay he basically was, he's been in a relationship with me, so it's like, hint, she still ain't clicking in that he been playing to both of them, okay? And she had to remind her like, oh, he came to talk to me afterwards. Well, we didn't even see it on film. He was trying to up there talk to Tierra Reed who's about to think she was going to slide her ass out the damn car door and shit. <laughs> whatever to come after the, at least the Cisco but yet she somehow is thinking Cisco really is the shit like I said before because he managed to get her the five uh five bottles of lotion and body spray and the bubble wash that you can get from Victoria's Secret and you know and a little extra in in, in hotel room but it, it's really I don't know. I mean, we of course we don't see it on camera or off the script, but we see him more so with Tierra Marie as far as the episodes. But it's she's talking about the hotel room. Cisco's making it seem like he just meets her at the hotel room, okay? And, and if y'all pay attention, she didn't say nothing when he they were at Joe's Cusa last episode. She didn't say like that's the same shop he takes me or anything or whatever. You know what I mean? So. It, it, it seemed like she getting more of the behind the scenes uh, treatment, the treatment, the treatment. Okay, so they decided where she's about. It's going to be a setup where she's going to show basically how Cisco is. I'll text you address when I'm over there at the hotel room, or whatever. Blah blah blah. So meet me there. We basically gonna set up and show who he is even though it's technically show Tierra who he is because she already is tuned Miss Amber's already tuned out into thinking like this is my man you know and I love him okay uh, Cisco show me Grease and these females <laughs> thinking like you know he's the one whatever okay so Tierra or me <laughs> late at night I said Mumbri yeah y'all heard it Tierra Marie does go over there, and Cisco's in the bed with um Amber. You hear the door knock, knock, knock. Amber knocks on the door, and you know Terrence is like, "Where's she? He at?" They go into the room, and he's sitting. There, you know, he walks up. Tierra Marie's like, "Come on out! You better come out here or something." And Amber says something, and Tierra Marie confronts him like, "Wait a minute! What the heck you were doing? You got you don't even have socks on." 
you know, most of the time, <laughs> you know, he always used to wear socks when he used to get it in, okay? This time, he all free, letting, you know, the toe jam in, uh, in, uh, in between the toes up there just sitting every damn thing. That's how comfortable going to lie and say he was talking to Amber. So, they basics like this, you know what, this is some business I'm over with. Amber's about to get ready to close and go. She's about to go towards for sleeve in the end. Of course, you know, Tara like, you know, I'm done with this, blah, blah, blah. Because before, when they were about to meet, she even says, like, I'm going to get rid of him, basically, you know, basically what Brooke did. I'm going to get rid of, you know, basically get him to dump this girl and then get rid of his ass also as well. So with Tara Reeves first, I think the one trying to leave, he all trying to stop Tara Reeves from, from leaving. Then when Amber's about to leave, she, he, um, he stopped her from leaving. And then they basically like, wait a minute, you on some big BS. They realize that, uh, you know, they go on, you know, have bad choices of men and... Cisco tries to play the damn victim as usual. If you notice in every episode, every season of which show, because you know he's he's trying to, you know, switch. I don't know. He might make his appearance in Miami. Shit. So I'm just saying is, um, now he was trying to say he started. You know, even security had to come up because he acted like again. Cisco is at least right now still a stage where he needs help with his anger. He need to talk to some folks about that. You see what I'm saying? And because he about, well, you know, trying to switch on Tierra, like, you know what? Well, you were stressing me out, blah, 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 blah. He just making it seem like he started messing with Amber after they broke up. And I don't think Tierra Reed, did, 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 did y'all catch, did they break up or they just had a moment where they're just angry and stuff? Because not what we were seeing it. And he was just saying Amber was fun. Then he says to Amber, like, I was getting ready to dump you anyway. No, she put all her MAC lipstick, she kissed all on his forehead. Just look like, just all here. Like, you know, she was testing the shade when they'd be, like, testing the colors. Y'all see some of the makeup videos. And, you know, they'd be looking at the lipstick and they'd be putting it on the skin to see how the color looks. That's how much the lipstick was on his face and every dirt thing. And, you know, on his cheeks or whatever, okay. So, a, a swatch, a body swatch, I like to call it, okay? That's how much uh, all his list was on there. So, basically, Tara Marie leaves, and I think supposedly Amber leaves at the end, too. But, again, 